close your eyes and get in touch with your breath. You're going to make the body your home right now. And the breath is the, the cleaning lady, the cleaning man, going through cleaning things up inside. You can make a survey as you breathe in, breathe out. Where in the body is there a tension that prevents that part of the body from participating with the breath? Can you relax or can you breathe through the tension? It feels like it's a wall of tightness. Remember that walls are made out of atoms, and there's space in the atoms, and the breath can go right through. Have that perception in mind. And see what else needs to be done to make this house a home. Because once you've got the breath as your home, the body inside as your home, then no matter where you go, you're at home. But this home is not just a home to, to rest, it's also a home where you can work. Particularly you can see how the mind keeps on creating homes like this. There's that verse which is attributed to the Buddha soon after his awakening. He's been going through many, many births trying to find the house builder. Now he's finally found the house builder. And as he dismantles the house, in other words, takes apart his attachment to the house he's got, then he finds something that's unfabricated, unbuilt. So by looking into the house you've got here and making it more and more habitable, you're learning about how the mind creates homes for itself. First you have to make a good home. That's what the concentration is all about, why they call Vihara Dhamma. The Dhamma as your home. The Dhamma of concentration, the Dhamma of mindfulness. And from there you can use your discernment to start taking it apart. Understand how this is done. So look carefully at how you put together this home. Because you begin to realize afterwards that that house builder, it's not anybody else, it's your craving. And your clinging holds it all together. Those are the things you've got to look into. That's why the Buddha's analysis of suffering is a noble truth. We're not placing the blame on anybody else. The fact that we're suffering is our own craving, our own clinging. When you take that attitude towards your suffering and your stress, then you're taking a noble attitude. And you're following the non-noble path, making the breath the path, making your body the path, making all the aggregates your path. So instead of letting these aggregates weigh you down, you can follow them. You can put them on the, on the ground and use them as a, as a paved road. The sign of the Buddha's discernment. And John Lee once made the comment that this is a sign of discernment that someone who can take anything and get good use out of it. You know, the Buddha's talking about these aggregates that we usually use to create suffering. He said, no, you can create a path out of them too, a path to the end of suffering. And as you get toward the end of the path, it straightens out and it turns into an airplane runway and you can take off. <laughs>